Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Dune Spice Wars. Today we're checking out the Smugglers, who are the blue faction here. They can install Underworld Headquarters in opponents' villages. They can place bounties on Landsrad Resolutions, and they have improved interactions with the Arrakis Black Markets. I have absolutely no idea what the Arrakis Black Markets are, but that's going to be something that we discover as we play the game. Also, uh, at 5k hedge money, we get contraband offers and we gain 50 votes at the Landsrad as well as at 10k hedge money, we get access to mercenaries and mercenaries have 20% more power. We do get to pick from two counselors here, which is quite good. There's a couple of good ones here that I find. Uh, Sab Staban Tuek feels very, very on brand for the smugglers, right? You build your underworld headquarters, you spread your influence uh, and then perhaps even Lingar Butte will give you authority based on the available excess water that you have. So we could make a rush for the polar region. That could be kind of an interesting way to play and then look to spread our underworld headquarters around. Alternatively, we could play Drisk and have the merchant trait on all of our agents, which would give us a lot of money, which combined with Staban would be quite powerful. Or we could play more of a safe, uh, you know, we could go Banner G plus one of these simpler guys like just Lingar and Sanner G. And I think that would be kind of an interesting way to play. Personally, the way that kind of appeals to me is going for the agents have the merchant trait plus Staban Tuek or Staban Tuek plus the Lingar Butte and then rush the polar region. But I think I'm going to go for the safer basic agent style of play. Um, that seems like a little bit more reliable. And I think we are going to play on difficult. Uh, and we're going to play on hard settings. We're going to play on a large map. I haven't played on medium maps up until now. But I thought it'd be fun to try out a slightly bigger map to see. Just to see what the gameplay is like on a larger map. Like, what are, what are the con what does it mean to have a larger map here? So we start off with CH2EC. I'm going to go ahead and recruit an Ornithopter and two Scavengers here just to get us started. And where is our starting? There's our starting spice field over here. So the very th first thing you always want to get online is your very first spice field. And that is exactly what we are going to be doing is getting this spice right here. Now we have spawned in the north e northeasterly region, but we're also quite close to the center. So I think it's kind of tempting here to maybe rush the polar region. We could do something interesting by doing that. But yeah, I, there's a lot to talk about with this faction. They're kind of a little bit different from the other two. We don't get Landsrad reputation, so we don't have to worry about the Landsrad stuff at all. But we do get other mechanics that I, I'm not fully sure how they work, so we'll have to kind of figure that out. There's the first village scan. Let's go ahead and take out Tabwaz. I may as well explore this while I'm here. Uh, it might be something worth doing with my agents. Combat is ongoing and it's two ranged units, so that should be a fairly straightforward battle for me. Melee units tend to be uh, ranged units if there's nothing in front of them. And we did find some ruins, so we could pick up, pick up a little bit of early hedge money. Uh, this is a bit unfortunate there's a rock outcropping here and there is the polar region so we are a mere one or two jumps away from actually potentially getting control of the polar sink and that does seem like a very powerful thing to do plus there's mount idaho here maybe we could play Ooh, i feel like we could go straight to mount idaho get control of this right 100 percent research re research hub pr resource production in this region and a little bit of hegemony and then push for the polar sink i kind of like that idea so that's what we're going to do i'll put my second ornithopter on auto explore just to naturally pick up things and we can act, act, annex tabwaz here so i'll probably want to look to do a little bit of raiding here but i definitely want to get out into the center of the map that's like my main objective here. And to that end, I'm going to come in here and get local dialect studies to increase or reduce my authority cost when annexing villages, purely just so I can push to here a little bit easier. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up a wrecker as well. This will be my third unit, just to make conquering these a little bit easier. I'm expecting two, three units in some of these regions. Yeah, here's three in Nunna, and then there'll probably be four in this city. But also, I totally forgot to actually place down my refinery here. Boom, there it is. Right, we fully explored this. We did find the black market. Okay, so what does this do? If I send 200 spice, I will get Solari. So this lets me basically sell my spice, not to the Choam. Well, I could have an advantage. All right, let's get ready to annex our second village. It'll be 68 authority, but it shouldn't be too bad. Let's deploy this harvester with auto recall activated. Let's make sure we're focusing fire all of our troops onto one unit. Let's retreat this guy. Oh, sandworm, we got to get on top. And there we go. Nunna shall fall. Perfect. We got control of Nunna and we can take control properly. And tech-wise, we 
could go for local hubs. I think we want to go for water sellers contract though, because we're we're pushing for the central region, which means we want to do water trade, right? We want to get that solar production for excess water. I know we didn't exactly pick the build that kind of like 100% synergizes with this, but this feels like an interesting way to play is to, to rush the polar region, get control of it, get that thousand hegemony, and also get control of the, the main water supply on the planet. So in Nunna, I'm going to go ahead and place a Plazcrete factory. The next thing that I will build will probably be a uh, wind factory thing. Wind farm? I don't remember what they're called. But yeah, we'll be saving up authority for quite a while here before we can get this. And in fact, to that end, I'm going to grab my agent and put it on the Arrakis infiltration here, just so I get that extra one authority per day, or whatever the interval is that you pick this up. So it'll take us a few less days to save up and actually capture this. All right, lovely. Nunna is finished. Let's go ahead and come into Tabwaz and place ourselves a wind trap. This is because we need more water in order to annex more cities and grab ourselves a few extra um, units too. And the good thing about having the water sellers contract will be that we'll be able to trade with any sieges that we find pretty, uh, pretty easily. Uh, now, it'll only be with the ones inside our territory, which, you know, obviously, you know, isn't perfect. You know, the Fremen can make alliances with every siege on the map. We'll have to make do with the people inside our borders. But we should only be about 10 days from, uh, from being able to here take Rune in and take control of the polar cap and, and make some serious, serious water. All right, there's the water seller's contract. Let's go ahead and pick up water trade. Perfecto. Water trade will, of course, give us 20% of our water production as Solari, which is the main currency in the game. And I'll go ahead and grab ourselves a little bit of hedge money here to start off with. And we'll get our military ready to go ahead and attack Runin. I'll probably make the play for Runin here in a few minutes. But for now, I'm just kind of sitting back, chilling, waiting for good things to come. I will apply a crew to my harvester. That's an extra five spice per interval. And let's go up to level two Arrakis infiltration here. Purely just again, I want to get that authority up so that sooner we can annex the uh, the polar region. I mean, here's the thing. Water to me now, with the build that I'm on, um, I, I think a wind strength of four is like the, the minimum that I would consider building a water thing. But 20% uh, of that water gets turned into money. So actually building ex lots of excess water has serious value here. It probably would have had more value if I'd taken different counselors. But, you know, I think, you know, it'll be fine. I don't know where the master briber trait is coming from here, but I'm getting plus two influence production. I'm not going to complain about that at all. Ooh, we could hire these guys to spread propaganda and immediately claim Runin. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Those water traders are based. Let's go ahead and get attack and Runin. What I really need to find is another spice field uh, to expand to once I have the water area. So spice and water, the two most important things that you need to control on Arrakis. I'm curious to see. We've got two melee militia and one ranged militia. So I'll use my first ra uh, melee guy to see if he can get past and intercept their ranged militia uh, to make sure that he's doing only half damage. And then we'll uh, we'll go from there. This guy's dying pretty rapidly, but that shouldn't be a worry. We do have a trade request. He wants my influence and he'll give me spice. There's not really enough spice to make a difference here. How is our spice flow? We're looking good. We can actually probably sell just a little bit more spice. I like the idea of always just barely meeting our obligations. Closer we fly to the sun the cooler our fall will look. <laughs> All right, let's take control of the polar region. Now, we're going to need uh, an ice extractor and also a defensive building here. We're going to need a turret. At the very least, a turret. 100% chance we need an airfield. Uh, first sandworm of the game has appeared underneath one of the uh, extractors. Thankfully, I have it on auto, uh, auto go home, which is quite nice. We ha now are in control of this new village. We cannot yet build the water extractor, but it will be coming uh, once I have enough Plazcrete. I suppose in the meantime, I could place down a Plazcrete factory here, uh, but that's not what I want to do. Redeploy that harvester, check the lands rad. Now the problem is we're going to have a very hard time with the lands rad because we do not have automatic votes. So we might need to play it a little bit carefully. Manpower upkeep would actually kind of cripple me if this happened, so I would like that to go down. I'll put like six votes onto that. Uh, I would like military developments to not pass. And I would, you know what? I want none of this to pass. All of this is bad for me, but especially the manpower upkeep one. So I'll put the most votes into that. The, the one thing I'm not the biggest fan of the Landsrad stuff is it kind of feels like you should just put all of your resources into one thing. That's how it feels like a lot of the time. However, we have reached the critical 2000 hedge money, which means we do have access to our new buildings. <clears throat> and I think for the first time, I'm going to skip the research center. It's really good, but uh, I think I might skip it in favor of going for something else early. Like the extra, the extra influence here could be quite good. Although, ooh, embassies are, nah, you know what? We're going to, we're going to focus on other things. 
I think this might be a raid that's come for me, so I need to get my troops over here to protect it. I'll go ahead and grab myself a militia and begin building the water extractor. Boom. So once this is completed, we'll be making 50 water, which is equivalent to another 10 solari in terms of surplus. Uh, once we finish doing water trade, that is. This should be a fairly easy fix of this problem. However, going forward, it's probably a good idea that I have at least a militia in every town and ideally a fully stocked militia in every town. But these early raids honestly aren't too bad as long as you haven't like criminally mismicroed and mismanaged your empire. It should be fine. We did find actually a viable spice field here in Tablon. That should be an easy expand. Although I think I would rather expand to Urur first. I want that Plazcrete. Although, man, if I went spice mining, ooh, <laughs> it's tempting. It's tempting to go, but I, you know what? I need fuel cells. I need Plazcrete. I think we'll play a little bit safer. We've already gone for like a super greedy water extractor opener. Um, we own the polar region. We're, we're, we're already playing it close to the, uh, the edge of acceptability here. So let's make our way over to our capital and then we can hit Arur. We shouldn't see a raid for another few minutes. Uh, and there it is, water trade. So now, thanks to water trade, we should start to see uh, yeah, we're getting about 14 Solari per, per, per interval there, which is not too bad. I could go for spectral imaging and use my ornithopters to boost my harvester gathering rate. I mean, that's not a terrible move. Um, and a 20%, I mean, like a 20% boost, if you think about it, right? Well, here's the thing. You could spend 50 manpower for plus 25% harvester extraction rate, or I guess these might stack. Really depends. But now we have access to the recycling vats. And I think I would like to get recycling vats. This will give me plus five water per main building in my main base. And uh, also 50 hedge money for each water producing building and 25 max supply. So that seems quite good. Uh, scaling water supply. Not too great right now. I could go for local hubs to keep my knowledge up. Or I could go for intelligence network. I haven't really seen enemy towns to start putting black markets in them or whatever. Or underground... Uh, thingies in them. Survival training might be nice or composite materials. Underworld bribes kind of feels interesting to me. Plus 20 salary production per faction with less influence than you and you gain 20 intel by pillaging a village. And also plus two intel per underworld headquarters. This kind of lets me have a spy network without really focusing on the right side of the spy tree. So I think we'll head down here. And uh, speaking of our spy network, let's kind of shift this around a little bit. I don't know if influence production is still, well, maybe it is. Although actually, you know what? Great time to uh, start are infiltrating the spacing guild because we have a little bit of a manpower shortage. We can deal with that once we have our Plazcrete under control, but that's going to require taking Urur here. It's only 42, but it's necessary for us to take Urur. Um, so the real worry here for me is if somebody attacks Rune in before I can get my turret down. If I can get my turret down, I feel very confident that this city can hold, I guess, most of the early game attacks that could theoretically be thrown at me. The nice thing is my capital city will actually take part in this combat and shoot at these guys. Also, we've picked up a decent amount of XP, like we're about halfway to a level thereabouts, maybe a third of the way, a little bit more accurate. All right, let's claim this, and then I would like to go raiding, although I could claim Ubuaz as well really easily. Ah, oh, man, I've got so much water, I feel like I should just expand. Expand, expand, expand. All right, Uro is under control. This is a Plazcrete factory for sure. It has minerals, which means we get double Plazcrete production. Let's make our way to Ubuaz. We'll put a single militia in here just to keep it safe. Our manpower is a little bit too low to do anything else. Oh, hello. We have found another person's town. I think I would like to install an underworld headquarters here. Perhaps this could be an interesting idea. They're not too expensive, only 200. And then I get a building slot here. Ooh, interesting, interesting. So if I do a contraband cache, it will stockpile whatever this village reproduces. And this is worth influence. This was like interesting. What about militarily? Regenerates the health of nearby units and refills the supply. Damages the village. Ooh, this building is destroyed, so hidden explosives. So I can basically trap this town. So if I were to go contraband cash plus hidden explosives, I could basically set this place up for a pillage. Wait, what? Spyware advances a random development owned by the village's fac faction every day. So this is like tech stealing? Or I could just get influence and intel. Dude, these things seem crazy strong. What is going on? Why are these so powerful? I guess they cost a lot of Solari to set up, but I could steal their Plazcrete production. Bro, this is insane. I mean, bootleg market, it'll give me more money. Let's try it out. I'm experimenting here. This is, this is nuts. If this is how this mechanic works, okay, that seems crazy to me. Oh, sandworm. Get into the city, sir. Get into the city. Do not get eaten. It is your job to not get eaten by the sandworm. You are failing your duty. So in terms of development research, I do think we are going to head towards uh, Underworld Bribes. 
uh, this is worth like 60 Solari. Uh, we're going to have so much influence from spreading our underworld stuff. All right, great. Let's take control of Obwaz. Boom, mine. We do have an unassigned agent. I need that manpower, really, from the Spacing Guild. I could build a military thing soon, though. Landrad influence wouldn't be terrible. I could also start getting infiltration in order to generate more intel. I will be generating more intel later on, though, based on... Hmm... Yeah, let's infiltrate the Spacing Guild. I need, I need that, I need that money, like, really badly. Now, all my agents are merchants, which means my gold and my Solari income should be amazing. So I think my goal this game will be to play around Chom, Chom shares buying, and just maximizing my income and playing very defensively. So Qualin, I can put an... It's only 200? It's really only 200 to put an Underworld thing in here. That's nutty. So I'm stealing, essentially, 14 Solari production from this town, and I could build another building slot if I wanted to. What is going on? This is nuts. Gen genuinely, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit taken aback by how powerful this is. It would be good to get a maintenance facility. If I built a maintenance facility in Arur, it would hit one, two, three, four, five places. So let's do it. Let's make sure we're keeping our militia up to date. I think that's important enough to uh, burn my manpower on. And speaking of manpower, uh, it's probably a good idea for me to... Uh, get a military building. Although my big problem is Plascrete. So let's uh let's get a Plascrete facility here. Plascrete and water, the two things I need the most. Hey hey, what's this? What are you up to? Okay. Don't do anything crazy, all right? Speaking of doing something crazy, let's get a gear sabotage so that we can lower enemy power. We can fight them a little bit more effectively. And uh, I guess we pop down a bootleg market here because we can steal whatever the resources they produce. This is a well of rich riches here, so We'll be able to yoink quite a bit of whatever whatever they make here. Uh, so in Runin, I'm putting down a turret. It has to go down. And then the next thing will probably be an airfield so I can have better control over this. Because it's a little bit far away from my capital. Which is moderately spooky. I'm not going to lie. Moderately spooky. It's time for another Landsrad vote. I would really like those cheaper building constructions. So I'll, put, I'll vote for myself there. It's unlikely that I'll get it. But if I could build cheaper buildings, I could build up my empire so much faster. Wind Strength 4 in here does encourage me to get more water. Um, I probably don't need to get it right now, but the long-term play would be to do that. I think the big thing is I need underworld contracts. Where am I capturing next in terms of towns? I think I would like Fon Alrek. So let's go, let's go start that fight right now because I'm expecting a raid soon. And speaking of expecting a raid, let's try to find some manpower. Are they coming for me? Hold on, hold on. Am I being attacked? I am. Uh, I don't have what I need to make this change unfortunately, but I can get there pretty quick and maybe counterattack. If he pillages, that's okay. It's not the end of my life. I'll accept a pillage. I should have had, I should have had militia in here. I literally went to build them as he attacked. So that's kind of unfortunate. He did get the pillage off. That's going to hurt my concrete or my plascrete and my water upkeep, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. We'll just get the militia now. Now remember, the goal of the militia isn't to actually stop the attack. It's to slow it down. It's to keep it from being, you know, an auto-lose. It gives you time to get your own troops over. Oh, we got a sandworm. So we've got a ton of Plascrete popping in. And we just picked up diplomatic maneuvers, so I think getting the Underworld bribes thing here would be pretty good. And I reckon it might not be a bad idea to get spyware here. I'm going to get so much... Yeah, I, I, I'll try it out. I'll try it out. I'll try it out. I, I don't know how good it is, but I, I, I'm curious about the experiment. Sir, you can't just keep attacking me like this. Like, super not okay. Um, and he is actually taking control this time, which is unacceptable. So a gear sabotage has got... Oh, my unit is stuck. My poor harvester. Um, I'm trying to think. What's the best thing I can do here? So these units are pretty tough. I don't have a supply drop. I think the best thing to do is to try to draw them out. And get them all into melee and stuff. Let's play the 20% combat reduction card on them. Try to intercept this guy. While my pillager runs around. Alright, I think... Thankfully, we had the defensive advantage. And we managed to... Uh, I mean, killing this many units this early has got to be a huge blow to his economy. Like, really, really hard. That's going to be tough to deal with. Redeployed the uh, spice miner. We got to get the spice flowing, baby. Uh, so that, that distraction kind of cost me a little bit of attention here. So I'm curious to see... How much does spyware advance things that I don't have? Uh, so over here in Runin, 
I'm going to go ahead and place myself an airfield. This will give me a little bit of mobility protection. I can move between Siege 2 and Rune in quite easily. I think a wind trap in here seems kind of okay. Yeah, let's keep the water flowing. But the big thing is I need to get like more militia protecting these towns. Also, I want uh, Fon Alrek. The Plathcrete production that this will provide will uh, feed my empire pretty well. It might be a good idea to get a turret in Nunna here to prevent this uh, aggression from the Atreides. The Atreides are being like extremely aggressive. Uh, we're very, very close neighbors, so it's, it's a bit concerning how aggressive they're deciding to be here this early. Uh, let's see. I would like to support the tax negotiations. Landsrad support would make me untouchable is the thing, but I don't think I'm allowed to do that. Oh, wait, I'm setting a bounty. I see. So all of the factions will be granted five Solari per vote on the targeted choice. Ah, so if I'm like, hey, guys, you want to vote for me? You vote for the smugglers, you'll gain some money. So the bounty is like a bribe for other factions. That's kind of a useful and powerful ability. I didn't realize that it worked like that. Now, I'm trying to think about what my win condition here is. And I think it's economic and military. Um, so let's go ahead and increase our manpower a little bit. We'll get a recruitment office here in Oboaz. I know it's not like the perfect place to do it. In fact, it's probably a terrible place to do it. But uh, it's too late. I've already bought the slot. Mm. I could put one here in Uru. There's a recruitment office. It'd give me a little bit of a military boost. Oh, that's a sandworm. Oh, it's a sandworm. So it looks like we're not going to hit our spice quota. Which is not good, really. I should. I really need to take control of another spice region. I shall get around to it very, very promptly, I promise. My next region here uh, will be probably the central one over here. Tablon. And then I'll try to get this spice region. So I've got two spice regions lined up for my next grab. In an ideal scenario. Right now I'm just trying to get my Plazcrete up to an overwhelming level. So that I can go nuts on um, production. The city... I feel like this city will need an airfield. It's far enough away and it controls three slash four areas. So an airfield there does seem good. So water trade is basically the only thing keeping me afloat alongside stealing money from uh, my neighbors. I guess I'm going to stop stockpiling so I can build up cash and start producing money um, by infiltrating my neighbors. Interestingly enough, the amount of spyware buildings it seems to be that I can build here, is it based on how many buildings they've built? Or how many tiles they've unlocked? Curious. But yeah, I definitely feel like Influence and Intel, while great, this random tech advancement seems like it could be a game changer. Because like, if you look here, random techs are now like advancing for me. Which is basically a way for me to increase my knowledge without having to increase my knowledge, right? I don't have to... I don't have to actually do anything. I just passively get tech from my opponents. So let's get set up for an attack on Tablon. And I'm also going to go ahead and get myself a supply drop just to make the attacks a little bit easier. Not that it's necessary. But necessary is the enemy of... Or don't let necessary be the enemy of good? Whatever the... <laughs> whatever the saying is. Yeah, it feels good. I'm like yoinking money from these guys. Um, I'm wondering where their spice field is. I think this might be their spice field. It's at least a fuel refinery. Huh. Are you not bringing in any spice? Interesting. He doesn't seem to be. All right, let's attack Tablon. We're in a position now to take it. You did not fully pay the Imperial bribe. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to let other people decide if they want to take my bribe. Otherwise, I would like Solari upkeep to be down. And uh, I would also like Landsrad support. So we're going to see how this plays out for us. Ooh, my influence is quite low. Is that because I'm bribe defaulting? Ah, uh, okay, so this is actually really bad. I don't want to be de defaulting on my bribes. Uh, apparently, my unit did not get in the shuttle. All right, good job. Uh, let's play a supply drop in this region. That'll get me a little bit of health back. And then you need to get up and close and personal. Get these guys at a ranged mode. Get these guys at a ranged attack. All right, he's regening just barely. Ooh, ooh, run. He got out. Come back. Okay, pretty safe. All right, with a supply drop, we managed to get this to work. Buying logistics would get me more agents. I do like that idea. It's probably about time I considered getting Underworld contact so I can increase my Solarian Crumb. So let's grab composite materials. All right, boom, another town under my control. Let's make sure we have uh, fully stocked militias in our extremities. We do not want to lose these towns to a basic attack. You're poisoning my reserves. What a jerk. All I've done is spy on you. You need to relax, okay? <laughs> All I've done is spy on you. Oh, they poisoned the reserves in my capital. Interesting. Um, so my manpower, my uh, all of my resources in a really great place, except for Solari. So that's like the big thing I need to get uh, going in the right way. 
All right, let's start stockpiling 50-50 spice and selling half. We actually want to... We don't want to be meeting our Miss Bribe here. Oh, man, I'm low on refinery. Uh, where can I get fuel cells? Where does it make sense? Yeah, I'll throw down fuel cells down here. Although I wanted an airfield. I'll put the airfield. Airfield first. Fuel cells down here. Keep my empire nice and well maintained. Sandworm interfering with my, uh, my little harvester. Annoying. Annoying little buggers. We do have an extra agent. Most of my intel is going to be coming from... Spreading my things. I think I do eventually want Chome infiltration. It's, wet, it's worth 10 salary per, per day or whatever, so that's not terrible. I do need to think about what my next, my, my big building I'm going to be getting here is. And I think I would like to get insurance banks, which is a 10% salary production boost. Or 20% hedge money from... No, I think I would like the 10%. So if I were to go like recycling vats plus... Chome branch. Yeah, recycling vats plus chome branch is my long-term goal. So economic lobbying is a few techs away. But we can make our way there. Don't forget, I'm getting a lot of passive tech from infiltrating the Atreides house. Speaking of infiltrating the Atreides house, let's go ahead and infiltrate Shabbat. I'm in. I'm jacked in. Uh, interesting that I'm already producing Solari here. Oh, it's because I have that ability where if my infiltration things are adjacent to each other, they gain plus five Solari production. So quite powerful. Anyway, water, plascrete, and spice. He's not really producing enough in here to justify that. So a Whisperer's Lair might be better. Yeah, a little bit of influence, a little bit of intel. But I'd rather get spyware. I want to keep stealing their tech, because they have at least three techs that I don't have. And uh, getting those advanced would seem incredibly based. All right, Tablon is under control. I'm waiting for fuel cells in order to build my refinery here. But that doesn't mean I only have to build fuel cells here. This is a little bit forward. And if I put a turret here, hmm, maybe I could defend myself better if I had more turrets on the front line. I'm a little scared and playing defensively because I don't have a big military and I can't really afford to make a big military. But I am going to go up to four units now. I think it's about time I did that. Well, we do have a raid coming in and my turret's not quite done. But there's the turret now defending me. Perfect. I have so much plascrete. Ooh, this is bad. Is he attacking? He is. Okay, we have to deal with this attack first. We need to start making um, supply drops so my units can regen in combat. The turret is big here. It's like a game changer. Oh my god, the damage. This Landsrad guy is slapping my units. So I'll get my units land. Oh, run away. Hold on. Run, 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 run. Don't let him kill you. So he's pillaging here. Which is a fairly okay thing to do. Two of my villages are under siege and he's got a trade request. Decline. Might be a good idea to start building Underworld Headquarters inside their territory. Turret w wasn't quite enough here, but these guys are pretty poorly damaged. And so if I get in here... The turret's no longer shooting, but if I play a supply drop here, at the right moment... Like so... My units will be regenerating in combat, which should give me the edge up and I should win. Let's go ahead and pick up Underworld Contacts. This will give me the processing plant building. Yeah, I think we managed to successfully defend this. And getting kills is huge, right? Because that's score and it hurts their economy. We actually even kept all of our units alive. So this was like perfect defense. Absolutely flawless. Let's start building more militia. I'm scared about getting attacked here. Let's also infiltrate them with an underworld headquarters. We might be able to install a bootleg market here. Uh, I've got plenty of authority now. So let's go ahead and teleport and grab this spice field up here to the north. That's going to be key. I never even got to build my refinery here. That's uh, <laughs> that's how distracted I got. Never got to get the refinery. One thing I'm curious about is should, like, what should I be building? Right, I've got tons of water, so I basically never need wind traps. But the thing I'm missing the most is money. Like, should I be building influence buildings? Should I be building intel buildings? Should I just generate straight up hedge money? And try to go for a fast win? I feel like something that will help me generate money is the right move here. I don't think I want to play Knowledge, because this faction seems to be all about stealing knowledge from other people. And I don't need more Plascrete right now. I mean, I guess I could just put a missile battery down and be really annoying to attack. It seems like a totally valid thing to do. All right, let's grab Iron Rum. There's another Spice Harvesting Village, so it'll make a big difference to our economy. We also have a new vote going up, and I do not want the Plascrete upkeep being targeted at me. I'd be very, very unhappy at that. I kind of want this one, actually. If I got this one, 
if I could scrounge together enough Solari, I might be able to make a, um, make a building in my capital work. Problematic Sandworm has been dodged and we grabbed ourselves another territory. So we're not going to be able to expand- oh. God damn it, he's coming for me. Um, did I build the airfield here? I did. I have the turret and I have a full set of militia. That's annoying. Right, I gotta get my troops back. Alright, I got- a couple of them got sandwormed, but I'm willing to accept that because I need to shuttle them. To here. Get another scavenger. Shuttle those guys out. And, uh, I need to keep fighting in here. Because as long as this turret is alive and fighting, I'm in great shape. Need to keep that missile battery alive and fighting. Don't let them kill it. Damn it, they got it. That's okay. The missile battery did its job. It made it, like, it made it costly enough for them to have come in here and fight me to uh, where they lost. And it did, it did cost me a unit, sadly, because I had to run through a sandworm to get here. All right, let's play some more fuel cells. Constantly feeling low on those fuel cells. You do a little ring around the rosy. And then go ahead and get in there and get fighting. Wow, I was hit with all of these things. What do you mean I'm in bribe default? Did I not pay for it? Am I failing to bribe? Is this just a permanent negative? Oh, that's really bad if that's permanent. I thought I'd be well in excess of my bribe requirements. Uh, looks like I was very, very wrong. Or at least there's something about the game that I'm not fully understanding yet. Wait, what the heck? What the heck? Man, they pillage Runin. Get a missile battery, rebuild the militia. Dude, they are like relentlessly poisoning my reserves. Let's make me make sure we target this uh, infiltrator. And uh, we get our wrecker over here. Needs to get him in range of the uh, sky port. Get the airfield over here. Get the hell down here. Let's run you in a little circle so you don't tank too much. Let's drop a supply drop here to keep my units healthy. You back out. Pick up that health. This turret should come online to help us out. I have so much plascrete in the bank, it's unsettling. But I, see, I the thing is, I don't know what to spend it on. Are they able to remove my headquarters? Oh, no, no. It was over here and I never built a uh, bootleg market. I will get that bootleg market now. Man, these Fade Akin are just insane. Fade Akin? I, I don't know how to actually say it. My money is really low, which is kind of surprising, honestly. Because I thought I would be doing really well, like with my water trade and stuff. I guess the... Um, the negative impact of getting raided and attacked so much is, is starting to settle in. I did manage to find a couple of point of interests, though, to boost my Solaris. So I'm not feeling so put out right now. And let's pop down the processing plant in here so I can increase my Solari production. That'll give me a little bit of breeding room. And we'll head here for modular parts so I can increase the maximum crew assignable to my harvesters. What's going on here? It looks like it's just a basic attack. I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. The good news is I'm getting a lot of tech for free. Like, seriously, we're getting chunks of all of this technology. Like, even if I just stare at the screen, when the day ticks over, you can see, like, all of these techs. Like, click, 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 click. They all go up like a tiny smidge. We do have a raid coming in. Man, this feels like the most hectic game I've played yet. I haven't even had a moment to think. Someone else reached the 5k threshold. I'm actually totally in favor for the water upkeep resolution, so I'll pump my influence in there. And we can finally get our third harvester. It took me a while to um, remember that I needed to build this. <laughs> I was wondering why my, my Solarian spice is so weak. I always love baiting enemy units into getting eaten by the sandworm as I fight them. It's like a really, really satisfying event. Oh, god damn it. Just now I'm trapped in this town by a sandworm. Um, let's go ahead and do gear sabotage in here and then start prepping another supply drop and gear sabotage. These feel like just like really, really powerful early game abilities. I'm really annoyed by this sandworm. I need it to go away. Go away, sandworm. So I can actually do an attack. I need to get down here. My poor town. <laughs> My poor town. Oh, go. I've got an unassigned agent. And I think it is time that I started increasing. Hmm. What do I need control of? I think it would be good to get a little bit more Landsrad infiltration. Get my influence up a little bit. All right, so our defense has been heroic. Man, they just keep throwing stuff at me. I guess they just really don't like me. <laughs> um, but I seem to be I seem to be holding just barely every time. Like, I'm always in position. I'm trying to think about what I would like to do. It's so hard. I, I think I'm, I'm going for passive knowledge stealing. I could use a little bit of influence. But I also, I would like to start throwing down these hedge money spots. But I, I honestly, I think I can get my influence and my intel 
from doing my black market stuff. So throwing down these crafts workshops seems like the best move, in all honesty. Because I can get, I can get, ooh, ooh, big attack here. I can get basically everything else that I need. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm putting a turret in this town. This turret. This town needs a turret. You heard it here. This is, there's a lot of nastiness going on here in the center of the map, and I'm not okay with it. So we paid our Imperial bribe, which has lowered our bribe default. That's really good. Okay, I'm glad about that. That's going to, like, loosen up our economy a little bit here. Chome isn't selling very well right now, but I still need the money. Especially because I'm about to build a uh, water reclaimer in my capital. So these recycling vats will, over the long term, give me a lot of value. Ooh, the black market branch. That looks so good. 1% of your spice production has influence. 10% of your net plans creep production is Solari and 10% of your water production as Solari too. This is a great economic building. I feel safe enough to go pillage something, but there's nothing here, like... <laughs> there's nothing weak enough for me to pillage that I can't also just take. <laughs> it's a bit of a problem. Oh wait, I have Landsrat standing. Huh? When did I get land? Oh, because I got the hedge money level. I gained 50 votes at the Landsrat. Does that mean I can increase my land threat standing? Oh god. I just moved my troops away from Runin. I swear to god, the AI has actual perfect timing. I need to get my units down to this airfield. Hold on. Uh, let's play the gear sabotage to weaken them. So they'll do 20% less damage. And I'm going to do a supply drop here. That will hopefully heal my troops and buy me more time. And then I'm going to get both of those again. Not a poison the reserve, sorry. Oh, you... Can't get refunded for that one. But yeah, hopefully the regen will do the job. Let's get melee on top of these guys. So they do less damage. I'm feeling pretty good about my position right now. Oh, god damn it. Can you guys stop? These guys are just so angry to attack me. I mean, I guess they're technically feeding me score and giving me reason to have a military and use my military. But it doesn't stop it being annoying. <laughs> it really doesn't. Bro, why are these guys so powerful? Supply drop? Poison their reserves and a gear sabotage here. Is my turret firing? I need to, like, get them off the base. There you go. Okay, now the supplies are tanking and they're dying. All right, nice. We got spying logistics passively from, from other people's tech. So now we get 100% agent recruitment speed. I'm still going to go for grid X plane. This is kind of the goal here is to get down to economic lobbying. It'll be a very, very slow research. All right, let's get up here and defend this town. This turret is not firing. I need to get them out of the city. There you go. Now I've got two turrets firing. That's a huge advantage. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Apparently, I'm getting money from, like, killing stuff, but I don't know what that's from, that ability. I mean, I'm okay with it. I'm happy about it. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. Um, I'm just confused. I'm just confused. I'm a confused, I'm a confused man. So, looking around, looking what I could build and what I could place. I don't think it makes sense to do contraband caches for me. I'm going for a very passive, sort of backseat kind of style. However, intel and... Influence production. Now that holds some water. You know, if I build those things everywhere, I maximize how much um, how much passive value I'm getting. Right, where I'm being very indirect. Oh, God damn it, Jesus Christ! <sighs> they killed my turret. This is really. <laughs> I wish they would go away. I'm really tired of this now. At this point, I need to build like a military base here. Like they are just so hungry for me, and they keep coming for me, even though I keep repelling them. Time and time again. Like, how many times do you want to learn this lesson, old man? I mean, in a sense, I probably shouldn't complain because I'm making good money from it. But yeah, I'll call that the end of the episode. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time as the smugglers. Bye-bye.